In this video, I'm going to be looking at how to handle a tricky sunset photo. We're going to take it from this to this. The sun is setting behind the headland in an area of clear sky, so there's very strong contrast between the bright sun and the headland in shadow. The key to getting a good end result with photos like this starts at the taking stage. It's absolutely vital to ensure that you start off with an image that has as much detail as possible in the highlights. For this image, I took a number of exposures knowing that I wouldn't have any detail in the sun while trying to maximise the detail in the area around it. Cameras are a lot more forgiving in the shadow areas than they are in the highlights. Nothing can rescue a blown out sky. Before I get started, here's a quick tip for managing your Lightroom tabs. There are nine tabs on the right hand side in the develop module. As I scroll down, you can see them there. There's the basic corrections, there's the tone curve, the HSL and so on but it can get a bit cluttered when they're all open. However, it's possible to tidy this up just by right-clicking on the gray area beside the name of the tab. And you'll see an option there for solo mode. And when I click that, it collapses all of the tabs except the one that you're using. So when you're in the basic panel, that's the only one you see. If you go into the tone curve, the basic panel closes and the tone curve opens up and it just keeps things a lot tidier and much easier to navigate through the different tabs. So let's get started with this image. The first thing that I'm going to do is switch in the basic panel into Adobe Landscape. And straight away, that brings up a, a, a lot more saturation in the image. And from there, I'm going to make a global adjustment to the exposure and the shadows. I'm going to raise the exposure by maybe about 0.35 there and the shadows let's see maybe 0.22 there and what that's doing is just giving a little bit of detail in the headland and I'll come back to that a little bit later next I'm going to apply a linear mask to the C so a linear gradient and I'm going to hold down the shift button and click just below where the level of the sea meets the headland and drag up. So we get a slightly feathered selection there on that. And the area that's red now is the area that any adjustments I make will apply to. So I'm going to bring that up by about 0.5 on the exposure, just to get a little more light into the sea. And I'm going to take the temperature up as well. We'll go up about 25 just to warm that up. And I think we might take the tint up a little bit as well. Again, just to bring that little bit of warmth in. And after that, I think the next thing I want to do is create another linear gradient, this time on the sky. And I'm going to take the exposure down there by about that much or so. What's that? 0.5. And I might increase the temperature a little bit on this as well. Just to get that little bit of a golden glow in. Now that gradient is covering part of the headland here. So I'm going to click the subtract button. And I'm going to click luminance range. And bring the picker over onto that area. Just drag onto it. And that's now subtracted from the gradient so it's only the, the area of the sky that it's affecting. And I think the next thing I want to do is to create another little mask up on the, just the top right hand corner there, a little radial one this time. Just to tone that down a little bit because it is brighter than the rest of the sky and I don't, don't want your eye drawn up into that area. So maybe just taking the highlights down. What's that? About 60. And next, I want to enhance the glow around the sun. So what I'm going to do here is another radial gradient. And I'm going to just drag out around that area around the sun. I increase the, the radius there and just keep the feather there. What's that? Feathers around 51. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go down to dehaze 
and I'm going to drag that to the left so we get a little bit more glow coming into that area there and then to compensate for brightening the area on the the, the rock face I'm going to drag the blacks down and I quite like that now I think the sea looks a little bit uninteresting it hasn't really uh, it's not really reflecting the, the glow of the sun so we'll do another radial gradient this time starting around the same area there but we're going to go vertically this time right down to the bottom and I'm going to go fairly extreme here. I'm going to take the exposure up quite a bit. Maybe even a bit more than that. I take the temperature up to warm that up a little bit. Um, we might bring up the whites and bring down the shadows to create that contrast that this, that would, ha would ha come from the sun. I'm going to widen it out as well a little here so it covers a, a wider area here. And maybe take the blacks down again. And I'm just going to get that kind of more contrasty look. But put in a bit of clarity as well. Okay, now the only problem with this is that it has completely blown out the sun and the sky. So again, I'm going to subtract linear gradient and I'm going to come just below the center of the sun there, holding down shift, drag down. So now our effect is, conf is confined just to the water. And I think the next thing that I'd like to do is just to click into the calibration tab and drag up the blue primary saturation slider. This is something that is great for adding saturation into an image without it looking kind of overblown. Maybe I might just do a little bit more with another linear gradient just to the top of the sky here, cooling that down, compensating a little bit for what I did before and introducing a little bit of color contrast into the sky. And if I do another linear gradient coming up from the bottom, just as a little bright area of water just at the very edge of the frame, and I think it, it drags your eye out a little bit. So I might just take that down a little bit on highlights, maybe even the exposure as well. Next, I'm going to target the headland using a luminance range mask. So I'll create a new mask luminance range and I drag the eyedropper over the headland now it has selected a lot more than the headland it's selected a lot of the sea as well so I'm going to hit the subtract button and I'll subtract a linear gradient holding the shift button down on the keyboard to keep it level and drag upwards and for this what I'm going to do is increase the shadows just to bring out a little bit of the detail there and you can see it's starting to reveal some of the birds nesting on the on the cliff and I think I might just take up the exposure ever so slightly as well and now I think what we might do is apply a color grade so I go back out to the main panels here into color grading and I'm going to the shadows first of all and maybe just drag the little dot from the center out so we have hue 220 saturation around 13 and then for the highlights we go the opposite direction we go into the kind of orangey area and so we have hue 37 saturation 11 I don't like going beyond 10 11 12 in the saturation on these areas they can look a bit over the top I'm going to add one more mask and this is one for the sky. So I just click on the select sky one. And I'm just going to bring up the dehaze on the sky just to add quite a bit of drama into it. Maybe I've gone a little bit too far there. And back it off a bit. What I might actually do is take down the saturation a little just so that it's not quite so 
pronounced, although it's hard to get the right balance between adding the drama and having it looking too saturated. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the finished image. If I hit tab to get rid of the panels and L to go into lights mode, lights out mode, you can get to see the image without the distraction of all the panels around it. So that's the finished image and here's where we came from. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. Uh, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to let YouTube know that you'd like to see more like this. So until the next time, thank you and goodbye.